So here is the, what is it, third part of the tutorial. Um, we want to build the UI spec language. As you can see, the UI spec language uh, doesn't extend the entities language, it only refers to it. I call this language combination. The two languages are combined by having one model the instance of UI spec referring to a model of entities. That's a relatively trivial case of language uh, composition and uh, can be done with almost any language workbench. Here is the syntax you want to be able to write. So we want to define forms, you know, basically UI stuff, which have fields. We assign widgets to them and then they point to attributes of some of our entities, like employee.name. The language structure should be right here. So we have a form. Um, it refers to the entities we want to use. And then the form contains labels. Labels contain widgets. And uh, the label, uh, sorry, the field, what did I say? The field has a label, which is a name. It contains widgets, which are kind of the UI elements that we want to use to render these fields. And each of the fields refers to an attribute from our entities language. That's why it's dotted. Uh, it's in a different language. So let's go to the truth, to the code. Here we go. Um, obviously, because we talk about language composition and modularization, we have created a separate language, which is right here. There is the UI spec language. And uh, well, we should first take a look at the code. So, so here is the company structure. This is our form. Um, it refers to the department and employee entities. And of course, you can go here, right? I mean, you can always follow references. You can always get code completion. I'm not going to uh, harp on that. And then we can define fields, right? You can give those fields some label. You can select a widget. For example, if it's a text box widget, um, uh, sorry, I should do what I say. Uh, if it's a text field widget, you specify the length. If it's a combo box widget, you specify a bunch of uh, values. Uh, yeah, well, down there you can see them, boss and team member. So basically the stuff you can select. And then you can refer to any of the attributes of any of the uh, entities used here. Um, just as a demo, if we remove that, then this reference is broken because we use, of course, scoping. So let's look at how this is built. So the UI spec language, separate language, first of all, um, defines the form. The form contains entity references and fields. And we can look at the fields first. Fields have a label, which is a string, and then they contain a widget. And this is the interesting thing. They reference an attribute. And that attribute, if we control click there comes from our entities language. So how does that cross language referencing work? Well, it's relatively trivial. If we go back to the properties, we can see that the um, UI spec language extends the entity language. Now notice that extension in terms of MPS doesn't necessarily mean extension in the way I define it as kind of language inheritance. It's really basically just um, this language has access to the concepts of that other language. And so uh, what we can do then is we can use the language concepts here, for example, in the attribute kind of reference. Now, as I told you, or as I've shown you, actually, you can only refer to those um, attributes. Again, if I remove that, you can only refer to those attributes whose entities are actually kind of imported or used here, right? If I go back to this, you can see the department stuff as well. So how does that work? Well, it works by um, looking at the so-called constraints. And constraints are a way of defining, in this case, search scopes. So the search scope for the attribute link basically um, defines what's visible. And it basically does it by um, from the current node, which is we're currently in a field definition. So we go up until we find the form. And then we ask the form for all its used entities. And um, then we add all the attributes of each of these entities to our 
re result list here, and then we, re we return that. So this search scope simply returns the list of possible target objects, and in this case, it's the set of attributes of all entities referred to from any of our used entities of the form in which we are. <laughs> so that's the first thing. The other thing that's interesting um, is something that I have done here. Um, if you have a checkbox widget, the respective field, or the, sorry, the respective attribute must be a uh, Boolean. If I select the H, I get an error message that says checkbox can only be used with Booleans. So we've integrated in some sense the type system or we've added a constraint to this language combination. Um, we did that in the type system. In MPS, all constraints are part of type systems. And uh, in this case, there is a, a checking rule which um, basically uh, validates something that is not expressed as a type system inference rule as, as we've seen before. So in this case, we simply say, if the fields widget is a checkbox widget and the fields attributes type is not a Boolean, then we output the error message, right? And uh, the same true here um, for combo widgets, combo box widgets, the field must sorry the attribute must be of type string and if that's not the case we get yet another error, another error message i guess i don't have to explain much right so this is instance of does the usual instance of check you can do conditional expressions and this error thing is a special keyword available in the type system language to annotate error messages to program elements you can specify here behind the arrow which program element you want to end annotate it to and i've always annotated to the widget that's why the widget was underlined in red color and not anything else okay so so much for language integration um again since it's only a reference that's kind of trivial but it's still one of the cases let's look at the generator in, in implementation what do we want to generate well we want to generate some kind of ui form some swing gui right which um points well which which, which, which has these widgets and then kind of populates um, the, the the entity. I didn't, you know, I didn't put that much effort into generating very useful Java code. Um, we can again look at the example code. So I can um, take my uh, sandbox here, and um, I always don't find the menu entries because they've moved around, moved it around in the new version. So uh, ba -ba -bum, company structure or Java. That is basically a uh, Java program which creates a swing frame and adds all these widgets and adds the labels. And then it basically has event handlers to assign um, the values of the contents of the widgets to the respective fields. Where is it? Yeah, here, right? Uh, if we press the OK button, uh, then we uh, basically grab the contents of the widgets and set them in the respective setters on the generated Java beans. So the point is, the way... So language com combination and language composition always has to also take into account how the, the resulting uh, generated code or any result of any transformation is integrated as well. So in this case, it's a really trivial case because we have two separate models, the UI form model and the entity model. The only relationship in between the two is a reference from the form to an entity's attribute. The same is true for the generated code. We have a completely separate, uh, separated generated code, which is in this case the company structure UI form. And the only way it integrates with the generated code from the entities, which we've done with the other generator we've seen in the last video, is by simply uh, using those classes. So the models are separate and only have references, and the generated code are separate and also just have references. That makes it simple. So the only interaction between the two generators is basically agreement on class names. Let us look at that in somewhat more detail. So here is our uh, generator for the UI spec, UI spec language. Um, and it basically has 
a, a, a template, as we've seen before, which maps a form to Java class. And again, that could be done much more nicely with a bunch of frameworks and stuff, but I've brute forced it kind of. Um, so here is our uh, constructor, which basically says we generate um, a field for each of the widgets. Um, and then we, um, you know, basically handle the OK button by um, using uh, assigning these values. And there are more details about that. But let's just first look at this guy. This is basically a helper function that generates the code for um, retrieving the actual contents from the various kinds of widgets, because um, that is uh, what we need here when we assign the value of um, let's say the name widget to the name field we first have to get the name fields content out of the widget and the way we get it out of the widget depends on the specific kind of widget we use again we could have implemented wrapper classes in java that may would make this easier basically um, you see um, for example for a not enough, not enough space here for a checkbox widget uh, we ask it whether it is selected as a way of getting out the content, right? And for a combo widget, we get the selected item. And for a text field widget, we simply get the text using the get text method. And then we can use that as a way of populating the actual, or well, as pa passing it to the setter call. Um, looking again at the main generator here, um, we uh, have, well, there is one interesting thing, and that is the um, here. That is um, the so-called or a so-called um, expression block. So we have basically inlined a bunch of stuff, and that is going to be uh, factored out into a separate method in the generated code. So in places where we usually could only use an expression, we actually use a whole um, statement list. And the way to put that into Java code is by um, Map, wrapping the Java code into a method and then calling the method. So th the way you do, um, the way you embed a bunch of statements in a place where Java only allows an expression is to factor these statements into a method and then calling the method, right? And that's what we do here. Here is basically a bunch of statements in a statement list, right here, this blue stuff, and then this thing um, expands that into a method. And this feature is usually not in Java. Right? Obviously, Java doesn't have these expression blocks. So um, this is already an extension of Java. We have extended Java to make it easier to write this generator. And so in the next video, we're going to uh, take a look at how this is done as an example of language extension. So um, let me recap. The integration of the generators is relatively trivial because this generator is completely separate from the entity to Java Beans generator, except one thing, and that is we need to know which objects we instantiate. Here, basically, we instantiate the entities we want to, or the Java Beans generated from the entities, and this is done simply by uh, using the name of the entity. So we have to agree that the, the writer of the Java Beans generator from the entities language and the writer of the UI language here, they have to understand or have to agree what names the Java classes have that we generate from the entities and what the method names are, because that guy here will have to, um, you know, here, call the setter name method. They have to know what the setter is called so he can generate code that actually calls the setter. So the only integration between the two is the agreement on the names of Java classes and Java methods. Very simple. And um, in this case, the UI form generator actually calls the same helper method, right, to calculate the name of the setter method, as the uh, entities generator. And so um, they actually integrate by calling the same method. So they same use, uh, use the same code, of course, but that's not a problem because that helper method is defined as part of the entities language and the UI language is dependent on the entities language anyway. So this doesn't introduce an additional dependency. 
Okay, this concludes our uh, first look at the first kind of integration. This was language referencing or language combination. Um, and in the next video, we're going to take a look at language extension to introduce those expression blocks here. Thanks for watching and uh, see you or talk to you in the next uh, part.